Hey, what's up? This is Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, we're going to be working with a very long sword. Now, this sword comes from the Ming Dynasty, and it is based off of the Japanese pirate swords that were coming into China and attacking China. And so the Chinese developed some long swords of their own off of the Japanese design. So that's why this looks a lot like a katana, but this is actually a Chinese sword. Now this is made by LK Chen. This is the Imperial Guards Chang Dao or long sword. And it's a really cool sword. I'll leave a link so you can check it out. Otherwise, we're gonna go over a particular technique today. Now this is going to not use the standard grip, but we're gonna flip our hand around with the front hand. And so we're gonna be working with a semi-reverse grip although we do have a two-handed grip, so it's not really making that big of an effect on the technique. Let's go get to work. Okay, so first things first, I wanna talk about two things before we get into the technique. One is the grip of the sword. Now, usually you would have a standard grip with the thumbs pointing in the same direction, this is the most natural grip when it comes to using a sword. We have a lot of control, a lot of power, and a lot of maneuverability like this. However, in this particular context, we are going to be working with a flipped grip with our front hand. So our thumbs are pointing towards each other. This is just like double end staff. Now, why would you be holding the sword like this? Well, typically with a really long blade like this, if you had to self-draw, one of the ways that you would take it out is up just like this. And if it was in a quick moment and you didn't have time to flip your hand over, you could hold it like this. Or in the context where this is a heavy sword, if you're always trying to hold it up and tilted, whether you're resting it or not, if you find yourself with the sword in the down position and something happens, you can just grab and go. So there's a couple of reasons for this. It's not gonna be a go-to technique. You don't wanna deliberately always switch your hand over for this. Now, the second thing I wanna mention is this is specifically written for versus spear. So spear thrusting towards you. Now, there are multiple types of spear thrust, so don't try to box it into the exact same thing. Sometimes the spear is going to be thrust with both hands. Sometimes the body is gonna be moving in and charging, and sometimes it's going to be sliding in. So there are multiple ways of spear thrusts. You have to figure out the timing and the distance for these and when it is applicable, okay? So keep that in mind, straight thrusts attacking towards you, and we're gonna be working on defense against that. Grab your sword, flip the grip, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I want you to think of is, again, as those straight thrusts are coming in, we want to play with moving things across the center line of our body. If I'm gonna to try to block to my right, I wanna make sure that I don't start on the right when I block. I have to start from the left to the right. You wanna make sure you cover both sides. This is important if they're stabbing straight on in the center, I don't, get, I don't miss the block and still get hit. I wanna make sure that I can block across, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the blade forward and in front of our body, pointing forward, a very neutral stance here. Now, this is gonna be pretty simple. There's going to be a thrust coming in towards our head and we want to shift back and then use the blade to come up and block across. So I shift back, block across. Don't go too far. You don't need to go too far on this one and make sure that the tip gets to the other side of your leg. You don't wanna to try to leave the tip on this side of the leg. You're gonna tie yourself off. That's very dangerous, okay? So nice and simple, shift back and block, okay? Now, if it's a low thrust, this will still work. It's uh, still decent leverage, but you have to have some forward push as well. So it's not just trying to swing the sword like this. We wanna have some forward pressing push, okay? Now this is also, if somebody's moving in pretty close, we can use this for uh, this next technique to hit the body, or we can use this to attack towards the hands that are holding, or just to try to cut and knock the spear out of the hand or even break the spear if we get enough leverage. So we shift back, block, bring the blade up and over, and then we're gonna step forward with a big step into a bow stance as we chop downward, okay? So again, I shift back, block, over, and then chop down. 
if the attack is coming towards me from here, I block over, turn it over on the side of my body, and then cut down, okay? Now, as it's cutting down, I want two particular energies in motion, pull and push. Now, the pull is pretty simple. As the blade is coming down, I want to think of pulling straight back with it. My push, though, is not so much on the downward. I want to think of pushing more forward at this point. So as I pull back, I push forward with the blade. Okay, so again, from this first lock, turn, pull and push. And then I can go all the way into this uh, downward cut. Okay, again, starting from our neutral position, shift back, block, step forward, cut. Shift back, block, forward, cut. If I'm facing towards you, block, cut, block, cut. Okay, nice and easy. Make sure this goes all the way across and cut down. With this sword in particular, I have enough space that I actually can block my head and this can work in between the hands. Not to say it's not dangerous for your hands, but taking the strike all the way to the head is gonna be a lot more dangerous than putting the hands in the way. So here, shifting, lifting, and then cutting downward with this. Okay, now try not to end with the tip of the blade down. There's two reasons for this. One is tip of the blade comes down, you're putting a lot of pressure on this front arm. However heavy this sword is, all of that weight and moving weight has to be absorbed with your elbow. So all of that shock absorber is in your elbow. You're gonna hyperextend your elbow. You're gonna start feeling like you have a tennis elbow from doing this. The other thing is if it's downward here, it means your backhand is doing the wrong kind of motion. It should be pulling back, okay? And it also means that you're not doing any work with that backhand. Last thing is very dangerous. You could end up cutting your leg or just hitting down to the ground, which makes you a lot more vulnerable. Even if my opponent moves out of the way after this cut, there's still something in the way between me and them. They have to work around this obstacle, which I can thrust or I can change it into another technique. Okay, so nice and simple, block and strike. Coming back, cutting down, back, down. Okay, so now let's add another technique to this. Think of this as if I cut down, you moved out of the way and now I am open on this side of my head, the blade is over here, I can be attacked up high. So I'm gonna think of an attack coming in this way, again, with the spear. Whether or not it's a uh, striking technique or it's going to be another thrust, we're going to treat it the same way. Now this is where I really like this particular grip because here is where we have a lot of lifting leverage. Use the spine of the sword on this one because it's where it's most durable and you can back up a lot of power on this one. We're gonna to try to not only uh, hit and, and block the weapon, but you can really knock the weapon out of somebody's hands if they, are, if they have a weak grip with this particular technique. If you're lucky and there's force against force, maybe you can even break the weapon too. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so as I just mentioned, from our initial technique, blocking here and cutting down, we're now vulnerable on this side of our body. So our opponent has maybe sidestepped or they've blocked and uh, redirected our technique over to the side. Now we can be attacked from here and this is what they're gonna be working towards. So as a strike or a thrust is coming in towards the top, I'm going to use an upward diagonal hoisting technique. Now, again, I mentioned this before, we have push-pull mechanics in this. So now my, my front hand is doing the upward pull and my back hand is doing a push. Now you have to be careful on how you do this because if I pull too much, I bring the sword against my body, this is not gonna allow much room for me to push. I have to pull, but also bring my arm outward. Okay, so there's a happy medium of how much you want to pull back. We don't want to end up back here. We want to keep the blade in front of us. So a lot of power comes from the push on our bottom hand. Okay, now footwork wise, we're going to use a crossing step. I'm going to move away as the attack comes in. I want to get some distance 
and then we're going to step out at the diagonal here. Okay, so now facing my opponent. What this means is if I were cutting this way and now from your angle the attack comes in, I'm going to turn so I can meet the attack and then I'm going to step out so I can now use my waist to power my counter attack. Okay, so we'll start again from our downward position this time. Step at that angle, push it and pull up and across. Okay, notice that distance I have with my arms here. All right, so I finished with this cut. Now raise, hoisting, okay, and then step out to the corner. Just follow that same exact path back down. Same push-pull mechanics, pulling back with this hand, pushing and pressing forward with my front hand, okay? So again, for my downward cut, I cross, chop, okay? Again, for my downward cut that we started with, cross, block, cut, okay? One more time, we have from our downward position, cross, cut. So now, so far, we've done a downward cut and now a diagonal cut. Let's work with a horizontal cut. Now this is a fancy technique and this is something you're gonna find um, when you can block and your opponent is not mobile or they shift forward, shift back, and they're not really stepping back. We gain a lot of ground on this one, so we're really going in to get to the body here. Okay, and we're gonna use a spinning technique, so it is pretty fancy. All right, so again, we'll be using this block across to begin. So make sure you always work on that one. Make sure this one is in good condition. Now, this could be a block to the head, right here, blocking an attack to the head, or I can be using from the, the blade itself below to block down below as I move in for my next technique. But the trick is all in the footwork. We're gonna step behind, unwind, and then sweep across. Let's take a look. Before we get into it though, let's do our first technique. I, I start from my neutral position, shifting back, blocking, turning over, cutting. There's an attack from the side, a cross step, hoist, cut down. So now from here, we're gonna use the same idea. Somebody's going to be attacking towards from the side of my body because I'm at this angle now. I now have the side open. This is where they wanna move in from. So we're going to use this sweeping or pressing block to get, uh, to make sure we protect the body. But we're also going to be advancing in. I know my opponent's attacking, so I'm going to meet the attack rather than to try to retreat and kind of reset. I'm committing to this situation, to this exchange. So I'm gonna use that cat stance again. Block, pressing out over to the side, okay? So again, we have that diagonal step. I come forward, block. Now, there on this side, I wanna keep think, think of keeping pressure here. I step behind my foot. I bring the blade down as I unwind, and then I'm gonna finish up with a nice horizontal slash, okay? So again, from my diagonal cut here, I'm going to advance block. Think of maintaining pressure as I step behind. I'm gonna to try to step through this little hole here that I've created. I've made some space, I step into it, I turn, bring, as I unwind, I bring the blade from the hip. This is what's going to initiate the power. And then we have pull and then push. So I wanna think of forward push as I come around here to extend into my opponent, okay? Now, it's all right to keep the blade handle back. You don't have to extend both hands forward pull back is all right because we get more waist rotation power okay so again if i'm facing straight towards you i have the block step drop turn slice across if i'm facing back this way i block step on the inside drop turn slice okay if i'm facing this way we have that shift back, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna step forward into this one. Block, step, turn, slice. Again, facing this way from that downward diagonal cut, I step in, block, step behind, unwind, slice. Okay, so now we have three techniques and we've worked with three different cuts. 
When it comes to the cut itself, remember that push-pull mechanism. Okay, that's what I really want you to focus on in training. That's not only going to make the blade more efficient, but it's going to keep you from hurting yourself by trying to overdo it with one hand or the other. Okay, so we have from our first block, a downward cut. From our second block, a diagonal cut. And from our third block, a horizontal cut and a cross. Okay, let's put it together. From our neutral position, I shift back, block, cut downward, cross step, diagonal up, step out, diagonal down, advancing in, block, step behind, flatten the blade, unwind, and cut. Okay, so there you have it. Now, I find this technique particularly interesting and specifically with this particular sword. Although you can do it with a katana or a miyaudo, what makes the difference with this sword is the length of the handle. So when you turn your hand over, you have a lot more reach in between the hands, which acts more like a staff or a long handled broadsword gives you a lot more leverage on specific techniques than say with the standard grip. Now with that said, it's not a superior grip to the standard grip by any means. You have a lot more mobility and a lot more control with this grip and you can generate a lot of power anyway. It's just a couple of techniques you have a little more natural power because of how we can use our body and leverage. Also, we use the spine of the sword in this one to block and that can be used as a sword breaker, if not just to block or parry our opponent's weapon out of the way. So I think this is really cool. And if you wanna know more about this sword, I highly recommend you check out LK Chen's website. Not only is the sword listed there and you can purchase one for yourself, but there's always history about the weapons so you can learn more about this time in the Ming Dynasty when the Japanese pirates were attacking and the Chinese decided that they were going to uh, fight fire with fire, so to speak, because the swords were extremely effective in how they were being used, so the Chinese developed their own. Again, this is a 100% Chinese sword from the Ming Dynasty, and the sword that LK Chen based this one off of is uh, an exact one-to-one -one replica. So we know that it existed because there was a blade that came from the Ming Dynasty that was sourced from China, and we know that for sure. So this is a really cool one. Check that link out. Otherwise, check out some of the other techniques that I have posted. See you in the next video. Bam.